G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the row count function in AmScript and show you how it works on your cloud pages and emails. So starting off on the row count documentation, we can see that row count will return the number of rows in a specified row set or array. As you can see by the usage example here, using a lookup rows function, we can return a set of rows, then the row count function will count how many rows were returned by that lookup rows. The best way of course to try this out is to jump into Marketing Cloud and see it for ourselves. So once we've logged into Marketing Cloud, let's jump into Content Builder and we can create ourselves a brand new email message to try the function for today. I'll choose a template on a blank page. I'll call this one row count as my training video for today and we'll go next. So for our email, what I've done already is I've gone ahead and found a data extension with a few rows. What I can do is I can count to see how many rows in this data extension have a subscriber with the first name of Astro. So my data extension here is called Sample Rows. I want to see how many rows have a first name of Astro. So what I can do, I can jump into my documentation for row count and see my usage example here and I can copy some of this code. Copy the code and go back into my content builder. I can put in a HTML content block to use as my code section for today. And I'll post that code from the documentation. And what I'll do is I won't do it as an inline AMP script. I'll do it today as a block AMP script. So I'll go percent percent and square brackets to create my AMP script block. First thing I'll do is a lookup rows function to return the rows for that data extension. So let's say set at rows is going to be equal to lookup rows. And my data extension today is called sample rows. So I'll copy the name of the sample rows just like that. Go back to my email and paste sample rows as my data extension name. And then looking for the value of first name. So I'll type in first name. I want it to be equal to Astro. So I'll type in the third ordinal Astro. Once I've done this, this should return the number or the total row package of how many rows where the first name is equal to Astro in my sample rows data extension. After that, I can go set row count will be equal to the row count function of the rows that were returned. Once that's all done, I can then output my rows with count of rows is equal to what? So I have to use my value of row count. I'll go percent percent equals V to output a value. I output the value of row count. So just like that, I can simply look up my sample rows data extension, returning back how many rows or the number of rows which have the first name equal to Astro, count those rows and produce that count here in my email. Make a subject line here of test. I'll go done. And now let's send or go to the preview and send screen and try the code out. So look at the data extension and surely the count of rows is equal to one. Perfect, because there's only one row in our data extension with the first name equal to Astro. Okay, pretty easy. Instead, let's try counting how many rows have the email opt-in equal to true. So before we count for ourselves, let's jump into our email code. We'll change this now, sample rows, looking up the email opt-in where it's equal to true. So we'll count how many true rows, count of true rows. We'll go next to render up this email and let's see for ourselves how many rows does it think? It thinks there's seven rows. Okay, we'll check our data extension. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. Just to make sure, let's try the false version as well. So we'll go back into our code and say look up rows where email opt-in is equal to false. Now, of course, we'll make this the count of false rows. Let's try out false. How many rows in our data extension had the email opt-in value equal to false? Apparently there's six. Let's try it out. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. Now, counting how many rows there are in a data extension is not the only way you can use the row count function. We can also count how many rows have come back from a row set from string. So back to our documentation, we can jump up into one of our content sections and we can build a row set from string. So in the example, we can see that using the build row set from string, we can build some rows 
by giving a string and our second ordinal giving the character used to delimit that string. So for example, we can see this row set will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 as three separate rows because of the pipe used to split those three rows. So let's try that out. We'll get our build row set, go back into our email code and rather than using a lookup function, let's instead use our row set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 as our rows function. So we're going to set rows as equal to that row set and we'll count how many rows there were. So count of our string rows. Now of course we can see there's three but let's try the code out for ourselves. We'll click on next and render up our email and hopefully we see our row set is equal to three. Perfect. We can try it out further by going back into our email, modifying our code and let's instead copy and paste a few more times and let's see how many times we've got this. How many rows are now going to exist in this new row set? 23 rows apparently. Perfect. We can try that out. And rather than counting that, it looks like about 23 rows to me. So fantastic. As you can see, we can use our row count to count how many rows exist within a row object returned using the build row set or the lookup rows. So as you can see, the row count function is a great way to check how many rows you've returned from your lookup or build row set functions. If you enjoyed today's video, then please give a big thumbs up and let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.